And I think what we'll do is we'll start at this end. And you happen to know what this great big tail is at the at the back of the fish? The caudal fin. The caudal fin, exactly. And what would a fish use the caudal fin for? To swim. To swim and to propel himself forward, right? So the caudal fin is sort of like the legs for you and me. And I'm always fascinated that the caudal fin, you know, first of all, is so big and that it expands and has these feathery little um, edges, but these bony parts right in here. In fact, all of the fish's uh, fins are really bony, except for this one right here. Oh, this is kind of an interesting one. Do you know what this one is? Megan, do you know what that is? It is. You can look up at our diagram too. It is it has a funny name. Adipose. Adipose fin, and I think adipose actually means fatty. And <laughs> if you feel this later, you'll see that, and you can kind of see it anyway. That this fin is not bony; it's really squishy and rubbery. And um, they don't really know why the salmon and also trout have this fin. They clipped it off before, and it hasn't done anything at all and made any difference. Um, but that's one way you can identify a salmon by this adipose fin. Ah, then we've got this other one up here at the top. What, what fin is this girl? The dorsal fin. The dorsal fin, exactly. And again, it's bony and it expands and it helps the fish stay upright in the water. Um, back here, this one is the the anal fin, exactly. And we've got two fins here, side by side. Again, they spread out. Pelvic fins. And finally, the pectoral fins. Pectoral fins. And you know, bodybuilders refer to their pecs. Those are kind of their chest muscles. And these are up here in the kind of the chest of the fish. And again, those all those fins help the fish turn and move in the water. Now, if I, again, go back here to the anal fin, and of course, Normally this would be closed, so that was what they cut the fish open to get the insides out. This opening right here, you know what that's called? It's the vent. The vent. And a salmon only has one opening for waste, and also an opening, if this were a female, this is where the eggs would come out. Or if this were a male fish, the milt, which contains the sperm to fertilize the eggs, it would come out there as well. So there's only one opening. Uh, for waste um, and in the fish, and it is right there at the vent. Um, let's take a look at, first of all, the, uh, the coloring of our salmon. So when you look down, like a bird's eye view, I'm an eagle or I'm a blue heron swooping in on this salmon. Is it going to be easy to see the salmon? No, not really. It's camouflage. So this dark back helps the fish be camouflaged when a predator is coming in from above, but if we've got a harbor seal or some other predator that's underneath the salmon coming from below, this is really wild. Yeah. So the lateral line picks up vibrations in the water, and um, so it sort of serves as the salmon's ears. The salmon doesn't have any ears like we do, so there are no openings for ears, but there's an internal ear and that also picks up vibrations. So between the lateral line and the internal ear, the salmon you know, picks up those vibrations and can escape a predator or avoid something that it thinks is dangerous. So let's go to the mouth now. I'll turn it a little bit. Megan, can you see you okay? Yeah. yeah, so the salmon has this really beautiful hinged jaw. I mean, you can really see how it can open its mouth wide if it really needs to. Almost like a snake does. Now, we can't unhinge its jaws, but it's got this real flexible jaw. And then its teeth, if you were to feel them, are super sharp. And they're pointed backward a little bit. So why doesn't the salmon have any molars like we do? Or why would it have all those little sharp teeth pointing backwards? Um, because um, the teeth, um, they don't, they're not for chewing. They're, they salmon swallow their food, so um, the teeth are to grip and not let, like, whatever they eat. Let it go, exactly. And salmon are opportunistic feeders, which means they kind of eat anything they
that comes their way. Um, and, uh, and so they just want to grip and swallow. That's all they need to do. And in fact, their tongue, if I, if I poke their tongue, you can see how stiff it is. It really doesn't move at all like our tongue. Our tongue is flexible so that we can form sounds and speak, but um, the salmon doesn't make any sounds. He's a silent guy. So all he needs is that tongue to help push the food or have the food slide in smoothly. It's a very smooth tongue and go into its stomach. But there's another reason why it has this nice mouth, and that has to do with the gills. So over here, what's this part called? The gill flap. The gill flap, exactly, the gill cover. It's hard, again, because it's protecting these really delicate gills that are inside the fish. Anybody want to explain how these gills work? Do you remember? Um, when water goes in through the salmon's mouth, um, it goes through the gills, and it, does, it the fish doesn't swallow it. So um, the water goes through the gills, and the gills absorb the oxygen, and the water goes out. Exactly, it's called osmosis. So the oxygen molecules um, can be absorbed by the these feathery gills um, and the membranes in them, but the water molecules cannot. It's like a sieve when you go to strain spaghetti, and the spaghetti stays in, but the water pours out. One of the things I like to do is sort of show how that water goes in, I'll put this probe right through the salmon's mouth and it really easily comes out the other side. So that's exactly what water does. It goes in its mouth, passes over the gills, and that's how the fish breathes. So fish never gulp air. Even if you see some aquarium fish do that, they can't get air from or oxygen from our air. They can only get oxygen from the dissolved oxygen in the water. So what do we got here? What are those two things? Those are nostrils. Yeah, and why would a salmon need such big nostrils? Those are pretty big for a fish. Because it needs it to smell and like um, also it to smell its home stream where we're born. Exactly. Yeah, it needs that keen sense of smell to get back when it's going from the ocean back to its spawning ground. So it goes by the sense of smell. What about like its stomach? It has its stomach, right? Yeah. Like, well, it, the the internal part is no longer there. So if I open the salmon up, we all the internal organs, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, the intestines, mm -hmm. that funny sounding small intestine like thing, the um, caloric cecum, was that what it was called? Yeah, that's all gone. Although I think we have some remnants of perhaps a liver right there. And we can see where the heart was. You can see that dark part. And remember in our sap fry, we could see the heart beating right up close to the throat. And here is where the esophagus would be and that would lead, you know, bring the food to the fish's stomach if it were here. But so all this pink muscle is what people eat when they eat salmon. So how does the food get to the salmon's stomach if the mouth goes, if like, yeah. if it goes to, if the water goes directly to the gills? It goes through the gills, but I don't know if I can do this. Sometimes I can. If I poke this probe through the other way, you see how it comes out its stomach, uh, comes out its mouth? Is it there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's the food tube or the esophagus. So when it gets ready to swallow, that food can go right down that tube that's, you know, been cut off. And then, um, so it doesn't, just like we can breathe and we can eat, you know, the same thing. The fish can breathe through its gills and yet also get food in its mouth that goes to its stomach. So... Good job. Thanks, girls, for helping me look at this salmon. You did a super yeah. job.